Okay, in this video I want to talk about an introduction to what are called Markov chains. And uh, there's certainly a lot to talk about with Markov chains. Uh, it's very, I think, I don't know, I think it's interesting. Um, but the way I'm going to approach it here is just try to, to introduce a little example and maybe to talk about some terminology and basic ideas as we go. So um, maybe somewhat realistic, I don't know. But uh, suppose this is what we've got here. So suppose there's an orange juice company out there and suppose they have a 20% share of the orange juice market. Okay, so, so what that means is, you know, if there was a hundred million dollars worth of orange juice sold last year, they made twenty million dollars of that hundred million dollars. Okay, so they have a twenty percent share of the orange juice market. And suppose you're thinking about doing a nice aggressive ad campaign, um, but suppose this aggressive ad campaign is going to be very expensive, so they're not sure if they should do it. Okay, so there's there's companies out there that do what are called market market research, and suppose they hire a market research company, and this is the uh, based on some data that they collect. This is the conclusion from the um, the research company. They conclude that if somebody's already let's call this uh, let's even call this something here too. Suppose the company that controls 20% of the OJ market. Let's just call them generically. How about we call them Brand A? Okay. Um, so brand A controls 20% of the market share originally. And suppose the market research company decides this. They say, if somebody's already using brand A, once you start this, uh, this ad campaign, there's a 90% chance that they're going to go ahead and stay with that, with that brand, that same brand. Okay, so there's a good chance you're going to have a repeat customer is what it says. Um, if you launch this campaign, uh, suppose they also determine that if somebody's not using your brand of orange juice, there's a 70% probability that they'll switch over um, to your to your type of orange juice. And maybe just generically, let's suppose this is based on a family of four. Suppose people buy orange juice, you know, maybe people buy OJ. Uh, let's say a family of four buys OJ maybe once a week, just so we have some, you know, just a time reference when we're talking about things here. Okay, so a couple different things here. Um, so let's just introduce some notation. So let's make A somehow, we're going to let that represent that somebody uses brand A. And let's make a little A prime here to denote that uh, somebody uses some other brand. So A means they use brand A, A prime means they're using something else. Okay. Um, what we can make is sometimes what's called a little transition diagram. So maybe I'll make a little transition diagram just to illustrate here. And usually what it is, you'll have a couple different circles. Um, so in this case, we're going to have brand A, and then I'm going to make a, a circle. The only other state in this case, so, so you can be in two states generically what it's called in this case. You can be in brand A or not brand A. Um, certainly there doesn't have to be two states in general. Um, but we're going to make little arrows to denote probabilities. So based on what I said a second ago, it said if you start with brand A, it says there's a 90% chance that you'll come back to brand A. So what we do is we make a little arrow and we put on there the number 0 0.9 to indicate that there's a 90% probability that you'll sort of make a loop and stay with that. Well, if there's a 90% probability you'll stay with brand A, I guess that would mean that it's possible that you can split uh, uh, switch to something that's not A, well if there's a 90% chance you'll stay by default that means there's a 10% chance or 0.1 probability that you'll switch. We said if you use if you're using some other brand there's a 70% chance that you'll actually switch into brand A which means by default there's a 30% probability that you'll keep using some other brand. This is what's known as a transition diagram here. Okay, So it just represents the probabilities of you staying in your current state or possibly switching to some other, uh, some other state. A lot of times what we'll do is, uh, well this is the main idea, we're going to set up, start using matrices. So I'm going to set up a matrix P to denote probabilities here. And I'm going to, um, again, fill it in here. So 
I'm going to put A here and not A here, and I'm going to put a little A up here and a A prime or not A there. What the left side is going to represent, it's going to represent, you know, your current state. And the top is going to represent the um, next state. Okay, so next state. So all we're going to do is just really rewrite this little transition diagram in a different way, um, a way that we can do some math with, basically. Um, so basically we said if your current state is state A, there's a 90% uh, probability that you'll stay in state A. If you're in state A at the beginning, we said there's a 10% probability that your next state would be 0.1. Um, it says if you're not using brand A currently, there's a 70% probability that you'll end up using brand A. And again, if you're not in brand A, there's a 30% chance you'll keep not using brand A. Okay, so this is sometimes what's known as the transition, the transition probability matrix. It's a matrix and it's telling you the probability that you'll transition from one state to the next. So um, I think pretty good terminology. Okay, um, one other thing too, another little uh, bit of, of, of notation. A lot of times I'm going to use this little S sub zero and what this is going to stand for, it's, gonna, it's what's called the initial state distribution matrix. So again, a lot of terminology. Um, terminology makes it sound, you know, it's descriptive I think once you, you know, once you think about it, but it's a lot of terminology at first. Well, this has to do with basically the market share. And we said initially brand A had 20% or 0.2 of the market, which means other brands, not A, other brands control 80% of the market. So that's simply what's known as the initial state. Um, distribution matrix, or sometimes it's called an initial state probability matrix. So let's think about a couple things using these probabilities. Um, so I'm going to leave my, my probability matrix up there and my initial, um, my distribution matrix. I may call them, I should be careful about uh, saying initial state and state one, etc. So I apologize in advance if I don't. Let's maybe calculate some probabilities here. Um, notice sort of at the start, at least, um, there's a 20% chance that somebody at random is going to use brand A. I'm going to make a little tree diagram here, which means by default there's an 80% chance that somebody at random who drinks orange juice does not use brand A. Well, again, let's think about uh, about what can happen. So, somebody that starts with, uh, that originally has that buys brand A, they can do one of two things: they can buy brand A again, or they can buy brand uh, something other than brand A. So, let's let's take somebody that actually has purchased brand A. Again, we said there's a 90% probability that they'll again purchase brand A which means by default there's a 10% chance that they will buy something different. If we have somebody that didn't choose brand A at the beginning, again we said there's a 70% probability that they'll switch to brand A, and there's a 30% probability that they'll keep using something different. Um, so now the big question here, um, and I'm going to put this back up here in a second. Um, Maybe I'll even stick it up here real quick. So this is our initial matrix, distribution matrix, representing market share, again, of brand A and not brand A. Let's calculate um, the probability that someone um, uses brand A after one week. 
using our little tree diagram here. And the way we do this, so obviously throwing a, a little bit of probability here, um, usually if you've seen Markov chains in a class, a lot of times you're doing a discrete math class, hopefully you've seen probability at some point. Recall to figure out probabilities, um, a lot of times we use what are called the multiplication principle. So what we're going to do is, to figure out the probability somebody uses brand A after one week, we're going to calculate the probability that somebody, there's two different ways it could happen. Either somebody used brand A originally, and then they continued using brand A, or originally you could have had somebody that didn't use brand A, but then they decided to switch to brand A. What we do is we multiply the respect, respective branches. Um, so the probability of using brand A after one week it would equal, we multiply the point 0.2 times the point 0.9 and then we add to that the probability of this other branch. We multiply point 0.8 times point 0.7 and point 0.2 times point 0.9 is point 0.18 point 0.8 times point 0.7 is point 0.56 so I'm getting point 0.74 and what that says is, it says the probability um, so after, so if you do launch this advertising campaign, um, it says th after one week, again, because we said at the beginning, let's assume people buy orange juice on a weekly basis, it says what's going to happen is one week later you can expect 74% of the market share to belong to brand A. So what this says is, so, so we'll call this little S sub 1, this is going to be the what's called the first state matrix. In our problem, this would be one week later, conceptually. It says one week later, it says that brand A is going to have 74% of the market share. You can calculate uh, the probability that somebody doesn't use brand A using the same little multiplication technique, but by default, if my math was correct, it says um, there should be a 20 26% probability that somebody's not using brand A. So that's a big that's a big jump. Um, again, this is where maybe um, maybe not quite so realistic. Um,